Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another election prediction video. This time we're covering the 2024 gubernatorial races, or the governor's map, for the 2024 election. So there's really only two interesting states, which are North Carolina and New Hampshire. And honestly, if I were to throw in a third one, maybe Washington, because that's actually a decently close race. But uh, besides that, we just have a lot of Republican incumbents pretty much running. Utah, Montana, those are just going to be safe red. They're off the board for Democrats. Same with North Dakota. It's not going to be competitive. Indiana, Republicans actually have a fairly strong candidate. They do have Mike Braun, the current senator of Indiana, running. He's a fairly popular senator, so I do think the Democrats are quite favored here. However, the, on the Democratic side, we have a former Republican running. So we have a kind of similar situation back when in the uh, 2022 Oklahoma governor's race where we had a former Republican run for the Democratic side. They did fairly decently. So maybe Indiana could go likely Republican, but with Mike Braun as the nominee, I kind of doubt that. If it was any other Republican, maybe. But uh, so far, I'm just not seeing it for the state of Indiana for Democrats' chances. West Virginia, it's probably just going to be a safe red. Let's just check to see who's running on the Democratic side. Yeah, there's not a lot of decent candidates here. We just have a mayor running for the Democrats. And honestly, it's probably just going to be a safe Republican. So we could pretty much rule that race out right now. Going on to Missouri, let's just check out the Democratic side. Yeah, there's just not a lot of decent candidates here either. We do have uh, the minority leader of the Missouri House of Representatives. But uh, again, on the Republican side, let's just take a look. Yeah, Ashcroft is probably going to win the primary. Does have a legacy. He is the son of a former governor in Missouri. So it's probably going to be a safe Republican as well. Let's just go back to the map. Okay. Delaware, we have a term-limited Democrat here. It's probably just going to be safe blue. It is an election year. I really doubt it's really that going to get that competitive. I mean, we could check who's on the Republican side to see if there's any serious candidates here. But uh, let's just check it out. Yeah, there's literally nobody. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty much a safe Democratic lock then. Going on to Vermont, it's only competitive if Phil Scott decides not to run for re-election. If he decides to run, it's safe Republican. Again, he's like, he's borderline centrist. He might even, you could even argue he's center-left, just considering he voted for Biden over Trump in 2020 as a Republican. So, again, he has a wide-ranging appeal among Democrats here. They just really like him. He's probably going to win in a landslide if he decides to run again. It's really not going to be competitive at all. And now we're down to the interesting states. So the state of Washington, it's just continuously really close races here in terms of polling. Dave Reihart, he's not too far behind. He's only four points behind here. Other polls he was leading early on, but now we're kind of starting to see these undecideds go back to the Democratic side here. Again, he is a former representative here, so I of course, he would do decent, but I still think just with the partisan lean of this state, it's still going to be borderline safe Democratic in an election year. I'm going to put it as likely blue for now, just because this race could get interesting. It could get more competitive in the future. We have to see. But right now, the Democrats look like they're regaining their support here with those undecideds going to their side. So now we're on to the interesting races in New Hampshire and North Carolina. Starting with North Carolina, we do have the nominees already. Josh Stein versus Mark Robinson. The issue with Mark Robinson is he kind of reminds me of Carrie Lake. He just constant gaffes. I do think he's extremely right-wing and partisan, so I really think he would have a lot of trouble winning over independence, and it's already showing in these North Carolina polls. We see Stein outpacing him by double digits among independent voters. And North Carolina is more down-ballot Democratic. That's one factor out of this race. Trump won this state twice, and the Democrat won re-election as well. And uh, Stein, he won elections before. So far, he's leading in the most recent polls. The one poll up, Sagnal, had him up by a five, Robinson. That's a right-wing pollster, so... 
but kind of just throwing that out because again we saw how bad they were back in 2022 they're not really amazingly accurate in terms of polling but uh so far these independents are just going josh stein's way we're seeing a good amount of ticket splitting i don't think trump is going to win the state by a likely r margin because that would ensure Robinson pretty much wins. If he wins by like five or six points in North Carolina, that'll probably give Robinson a tilt our victory. We are going to probably see a lot of ticket splitting here in the state of North Carolina. I just see it happening. But so far, Stein, he's in a good spot. He is doing better among independent voters. There's just a ton of gaffes made by Robinson in the past that Democrats are probably going to exploit. We're already seeing them exploit all sorts of clips of him in the past of what he said. So we're already seeing that hurt him with independent voters. But this will be a close race. It's going to be tilt either way, in my opinion. I wouldn't even rank it as lean D for now, because you could run a bad Republican candidate in North Carolina and still have a fairly good shot at winning here. It's still a more Republican-leaning state, but it is more Democratic down ballot. So even if Trump wins North Carolina... It's not a guarantee Robinson wins. There's going to be a disconnect there with independents going to Stein a lot more than they are going to Biden. So I have this race as a tilt blue rating so far. Robinson's still in the game, but he's probably one of the weaker Republican governor candidates. So I do think he's going to struggle here with independents like we're already seeing. And now we're going on to the state of New Hampshire. I also think this race is going to be pretty competitive. The Republicans do have a decent candidate on their side with Kelly Oyette. Uh, she is a former senator. She barely lost back in the 2016 New Hampshire Senate race. She only lost by like a thousand votes. So she lost by a tilt margin before as an incumbent senator in the state of New Hampshire. The one thing I could see her hurting her is her abortion position. We could just take a look at that in her political positions page. But again, with abortion being such a big issue in the 2024 election, I definitely see it hurting her in the state of New Hampshire because she believes abortion should be permitted except in cases of uh, all these standards here. So again, she pretty much only believes in abortion in terms of exceptions. I could see that hurting her in the state of New Hampshire, because when you run like a campaign against abortion like that as a Republican, usually you still end up losing those uh, ballot positions or um, what do they call them? I can't recall. It's just when they vote, it's like a referendum, basically, when they vote on whether to do more abortion, like limiting abortion access, like we saw one in Ohio before, where they... uh, voted down that rule that a referendum needed 60 percent to pass and that was framed in the abortion argument there again i think just the issue of abortion could definitely hurt kelly yet but on the democratic side we don't have the best democratic candidate no like house representatives but we do have a mayor so the democratic side actually has a decent candidate in joyce craig however the polling not a lot of polling's out of here I don't know why they aren't pulling this race. They're pulling the 2024 election in New Hampshire like crazy. What's so hard about including a polling question about the governor's race? Is it just purely internal polls going this race that are just not releasing to the public? I don't know what's going on with New Hampshire. So, again, this is probably the most like uh, difficult race to pretty much predict here in this state. However, Biden's probably going to end up winning this state by like seven or eight points in the 2024 election. Trump just continues to poll pretty badly in this state. I don't think Trump's going to spend much time here either. Honestly, I think that'd be a waste of time for Trump. If I was on this campaign, I would just pretty much give up on New Hampshire. It's only four electoral votes after all. There's other swing states that are way more important. Like in the Rust Belt, there's states that have 10 to 19 electoral votes. Those are way more better time to be spent in those states than New Hampshire. But, uh, Again, Kelly Oyet, she'll definitely keep this race competitive. Joyce Craig, she's at least a mayor, so they do have a decent candidate on that side. And I do think abortion is going to be a key issue here, and Kelly Oyet is somewhat supportive of abortion restrictions, as we've seen. But uh, she's only pretty much a supporter 
of the exception argument for abortions. But uh, so far, I think this race probably could go either way. It's a really tough one to call, though. Just due to Biden's performance in New Hampshire in 2024, I expect him to win by a likely blue margin. And uh, Kelly, she's not even leading by much here. I would probably put this as a tilt blue race for now. Other than that, that's pretty much my prediction so far for the gubernatorial races. They could change next time, but that's my current prediction. Thanks for watching.